Hi, my name is Audrey McIntyre, and I'm the senior leader, the senior pastor of House of Good Hope, Hartford House of Prayer. And there's been something that the Lord's been speaking to me about and something that I need to be sensitive to and aware with, aware of. And I have a strong sense that there are others who also need to hear this. Uh, we've been doing for the last five years um, a, a type of prayer called Tabernacle Prayer. And through this, the Lord has been really molding me, refining me, and honing me, and teaching me, downloading so many rich treasures to me. And it's amazing the things I've been learning through Tabernacle Prayer. And I encourage you, if you have never done this before, is to to do it, to try it, to do it. Uh, to, this is a prayer format that is pretty basic. It's um, seeing yourself in your mind's eye approaching God through the tabernacle, going through the gates of praise, spending a short time in praise until you feel the presence and the heart of God, going to the altar of sacrifice and just unloading yourself, repenting if that needs to be done and just unloading yourself and then going to the to come for the cleansing and then go in and wait on the Lord, wait to hear his voice, wait and ask him for the infilling, ask him, him, ask the Lord for, um, for more of wisdom, more, uh, more of this word. And then, and, and, and then wait until you have something until you hear the voice of the Lord and then go to the incense altar and then pray back what you hear from the Lord. So this morning, as I was um, praying through the tabernacle, the Lord gave me this download that's really has been bothering me. It's been something that I've been uh, wrestling with for the last, I don't know how many years. I've just noticed it in myself and I've noticed it in others. I've noticed it in pro uh, private prayer and in myself. And I've also noticed it in corporate prayer gatherings. And when this happens, um, it seems like the dynamics, the presence of God just lifts and it goes and we like we miss God and all of this. So I just want to share a little bit of my heart with you. You know, as intercessors, we've seen some incredible answers to prayer. Uh, we've seen circumstance, circumstances change in others as we pray for them. And it is so amazing to see and to witness the, the glory, the majesty of God because someone, because we prayed. <clears throat> Yet there is a weakness that rises up inside of this, inside of us because of what we have seen through intercession. I have done this so many times and I've seen some of my prayer partners do this. <clears throat> and we do this often and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Because we witnessed so many ma uh, majesty and power uh, in our answered prayer, all of this <coughs> motivates us to pray all the more. You know, there may be circumstances in our lives and in our friends' lives, our loved ones' lives that we desperately want to see changed. Or we may be going some, we may see someone going through something and that we think that that should change. So we spend time and energy and energy interceding. Someone we dearly love needs to know Jesus or they are blind to a problematic situation going on and they don't listen to our counsel. So we intercede as we should, we should intercede. But then somehow we cross that line. Our intercession, our prayers, they start to become manipulative. We so desperately want to see our loved ones saved or circumstances change, someone healed, that we do all we can to change the situation. Our prayers be start becoming a detriment, a deterrent of what the working of God might be. In a sense, our prayers start becoming a bondage and putting people in bondage and putting ourselves in bondage. In fact, we might even find ourselves praying and we, come, we find ourselves praying out of God's will for that person or that situation 
the Lord may even be, you know, the Lord may be allowing that. What um, he may be allowing the situation that we don't want to see happening to happen for a specific reason. And we don't, we don't even know this in our, in our myopic vision. For a, he was calling this to happen. He's allowing it to happen for a specific reason and a specific, specific purpose. In fact, we find ourselves, we might even cross that line and we might even find ourselves call, praying what many pastors, many leaders, many other uh, intercessors call witchcraft prayers. We cannot, we have to come to the real, realization that we cannot and we must not manipulate Yehovah, manipulate the great I am. As the Lord has been teaching me tabernacle prayer, I have been learning, I have learned one very valuable tool in intercessory prayer. And this is a prayer that, um, that is amazing. What we do in, in, in a tabernacle prayer is a, it's a blueprint that came from the Lord, that the Lord gave Moses. And what we do in our mind's eye and in our spirits is that we approach God through the, the workings and through the tabernacle. We start visualizing visualizing ourselves in the tabernacle we go through the gates of praise and we spend some time praising and thanking the lord for all his goodness for his good goodness towards us his goodness towards others and this good is all around goodness and then we go to what's called the altar of sacrifice and we come to the realization that this is the largest altar in the whole tabernacle um, I know we in House of Good Hope, we spent some time, I think we some we spent a, about one to two years doing nothing but praying at the altar of sacrifice after we've gone through the gates of praise. And at the altar of sacrifice, this is a place of letting go, a place of going through a heart check, of just releasing whatever's going on inside us, uh, whether it's uh, sin or whether it's um, hurt or pain or suffering anything that's going on inside us we this is a place of just letting go and this is a place where we can where we need to pour out as intercessors we need to pour out all that's burning and boiling inside us to pour out all of our prayer that prayer for our loved one who needs to know Jesus that prayer for that person that needs to be healed, that prayer for what's going on and the wars that are going on or, or all kinds of disasters that are going on in the world or uh, praying for our government. Uh, all of that is to be done here at this altar. This is a place of just pouring out, pouring out whatever's on our hearts, whatever's burning inside of us, either individually or corporately. But the one thing we need to learn is as we, after we get done, we pray and we pray and we pray until we feel the release, until everything that is prayed out that needs to be prayed out is. But then after we do that, this is the time of just releasing, of letting it go. Those, that's what we need to visualize. We need to see that those prayers, whatever was burning inside us is no longer us. It no longer belongs to us. We poured it all on the altar. We gave it to the Lord. It's all on the altar. And then we, re and we just release it. We just give it to him. It's his. No matter what we, how desperately we want to see that prayer answered. We need to let it go. It no, that prayer no longer belongs to us. It no longer belongs to me. The Lord is the only one who has the power and the authority to answer that prayer. It's not me. And then after we go through the releasing of all of our heart, all of this pouring it through our guts and everything, we go to the place of cleansing. We come and we, and we just submit to the Lord just gently and lovingly cleansing us, removing all of that all of that, whatever it is, whatever it is, just to cleanse us from all of that. The cleanse, 
cleanse us from that des desperate desire to see our loved ones saved, to cleanse us from financial difficulties that maybe someone else is going to, through or maybe we're going through. That, um, that prayer of some for someone's healing and to see someone completely healed and delivered out of chronic illness. Wars, wars that are going on in, in other nations and maybe possibly going on in our nation. We need to let all of that go, be cleansed from all of that. All of the unrighteousness that we may see that we are pouring our hearts out to the Lord. We need to let it go and we need to be cleansed of it. I pour out my heart's desire. I petition the great I am. To, I ask him to intervene. And then when I'm done, I walk away. I let it go. No matter how painful it is. No matter how much I want to see that happen. No matter what, I walk away. It no longer belongs to me. And then I'm cleansed of it. And then we're, we go into the holy place. We go into the inner chamber and we wait. We ask the Lord, the Ruach HaKodesh, we ask the Lord for his eyes. We ask the Lord for his heart. We ask the Lord for his wisdom. We ask the Lord for his prayers. No matter what, if, if it's the topic that we prayed for at the altar of sacrifice, we release it to the Lord and we allow the Lord to speak to us. We ask the Lord to speak to us. How does the great I am want me to do or not do in and through all of what I have prayed for at the altar of sacrifice? And then I wait for the Lord's instructions. I wait for Yehovah's orders. I may be instructed to go out and to do a specific thing. Or I may be called to do nothing. I may be called to wait. Or I may even be instructed to pray differently. Then all of a sudden, a realization, my eyes are open and I see that I am praying wrong. And I need to correct that prayer. Pray a different way. You know, through tabernacle prayer, I am learning how to pray Yahovah's prayers. The great I am's prayers, not my prayers, not mine. I seek and I long to gain the Lord's wisdom, not mine. This whole process can be instantaneous. When we're at the altar of sacrifice, pouring our, our guts out to the Lord, all of a sudden, instantaneously, we could be in the inner chamber and he's speaking to us already. It could be that quick, or it could take hours, or it could take months or days or even years before that breakthrough come, comes, but we need to learn to let go of that prayer, not hang on to it, not pray my will be done, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that this makes sense to some of you, that this speaks to your heart. And I pray also that uh, learn to pray through the tabernacle. The highest call that any of us can be to do is to be that one standing at the incense altar, offering up that incense of intercession. Praying his prayers, the Lord God, Yahovah's prayers, and seeing and speaking out his wisdom on the earth. There is nothing more powerful than the spoken word, the spoken voice. Nothing more powerful. The Lord has called us to partner with him, to partner with him to his, for his kingdom to be established. We don't know how it's going to happen. I am one who does believe in the rapture. I do believe that we will be taken into heaven. I also believe that we are going to have tribulation. It's going to get worse instead of better. But, you know, as we pray, this is one thing that I've been seeking the Lord on. You know, as we see all of the stuff that's going on around us, all of the junk, the junk, all of the crap that's going on around us. 
and we pray against it. Who knows? Maybe we're praying against God's will. He might be hastening the end. The end is glorious. To be married to Jesus, all of us, the betrothal, it's so amazing what he's going to do. So I caution you as you intercede, as you pray, seek the Lord and how to pray his prayers. Ask the Lord, what is your perspective in this? How do you want me to pray? May the Lord richly bless you in every way possible. Amen.